Hello everyone and welcome back to JDD TV. I'm your host Josh and today we are here to break down some transfer news. Kyle Lahren has sealed his move to La Liga and Ike Ugbo could potentially be heading to the championship. Some big storylines to talk about today so hopefully you guys are excited and if you are as always be sure to drop a like, drop a sub and let's get into the episode now. <laughs> All right, everyone, so to start off this episode, we are going to take a look at Kyle Lahren, who sealed his lone move from Club Bruges to Real Valladolid. Now, Cadiz was interested, and I thought this transfer was probably going to go down. I think that one made a little bit more sense than the Valladolid one did, but it didn't happen. The tweet came out. We have Alex here as well, who's who's touching on it on Twitter, but it says, Official, Kyle Lahren is heading to La Liga to join Real Valladolid on loan as he looks to find more minutes. We saw Club Bruce tweeting it out, Real Valladolid tweeted out, friend of the channel Manuel Vaith tweeted out, I tweeted out, Michael Singh, everyone was tweeting out because it's exciting news and Kyle Lahren does look good in purple. But let's first take a look at Real Valladolid and talk about what I really think is going to happen with this transfer. Now, as you guys know, Kyle Lahren has found minutes very hard to come by in Club Bruges. I think he was as far down as fifth on their striker depth chart. No minutes, no confidence, needed that move. And I was very curious to see where he was going to go. Now, like I mentioned before, he really wanted to go to the Premier League or Champions League when he made that move to Club Bruges. He got the Champions League move. And now it was time for him to maybe lower his expectations a little bit, just to maybe find a transfer that he could potentially pull off. And that's exactly what he did. He had a big salary and he had very stingy options out there but he found the ability to move to a top five league and i'm very excited for him going to la liga now the two clubs that were interested in him are one sitting 19th in the table one is sitting 18th he landed in 18th place real valladolid and right now when you look at their strikers they do have some striker options i'm curious to see where he's going to fit in this side because in all honesty i was a little bit surprised when it comes to the system that they play which it's usually a 4-3-3 but recently against Atletico Madrid who was going to boss that game they, they featured in a 3-4-1-2 so there could be some flexibility for a two striker system they have Wiesman up there they have Leon and they have Guardiola three striking options but when they play in a 4-3-3 system Kyle Lahren as we know has the ability to go out wide so considering that when you look through their matches and how Valladolid basically set up, you see a lot of this 4-3-3 system. So I expect, honestly, a lot of the chances for Kyle Lahren to potentially come through the wings. We know that he can do it. I personally think he's better through the middle. If they do go with this 3-4-1-2 system and Lahren plays as a dual striker, I think that's going to be very good. But there is a lot of striker options. Three striker options right now for them makes me a little wary about how Kyle Lahren will fit into this side. He needs confidence, he needs to come in, hit the ground running, get that type of experience back, his touch back, his scoring ability, and hopefully gel with his new teammates as they're looking to avoid relegation. Now they are sitting in a relegation spot like I mentioned, but the nice thing is it, it's pretty easy right now to climb out if they can get some, some results. They have lost at least five in a row when you're looking at the recent form. Their last five has, has been five straight losses. They've dropped down to 18th place. They're sitting on 17th points. So this will be a very intriguing relegation battle and hopefully Lahren can come in with some goals and help Valladolid avoid relegation. Now I like this move for the main reason that I got him out of Club Bruges. It'll hopefully get him minutes. It's to a top five league. My cons come with the fact that there are three established strikers there. Yes, they're not obviously scoring, but there is going to be some real competition, which, you know, could push Kyle Lahren. But I don't think this is a shoe in for Kyle Lahren to walk right into this starting 11. He does have the ability in that 4-3-3 system to feature on either flank. So the front three, there are options, and if they go into the two striker systems, that'll get at least two of the four strikers in there. But I wouldn't be surprised if it takes a little bit of time for Kyle Lahren to actually get a start. But hopefully I'm wrong, he just walks right in there. But the second transfer we're going to look at today is Ike Umbo, another Canadian national team striker who was not getting minutes at Twa. It was a tough year for for Ike Umbo. It really was. There's no other really way to put it. I was really hoping after that successful end to the season he had with Twa and he earned this permanent move that... He would have just had a starting role. He did not have that whatsoever. Not at all. Mama Balde completely took over his spot. He's barely even making it off the bench. He needs a move. And Fabrizio Romano came out and tweeted that multiple English championship clubs have inquired about E.K. Ugbo. And they expect the player to leave within this transfer window potentially in the next few days. So this will be a very interesting story as well. Now, at the time of recording, 
I mean, hopefully when you guys see this, a deal hasn't been done, but I just thought it'd be fun to take a look at some potential options for EK Ubo in the championship. These aren't actual rumors. Fabrizio was not very clear about, you know, who exactly is interested. So I just was gonna have some fun with it. So I'm gonna start off with a familiar uh, phase, which I mean, Sheffield United, it's got Daniel Jebson there. They were linked a little bit with Ismail Kone. I think they could potentially give a push for EK Ubo for a couple different reasons. One, they're competing to move to the Premier League. I mean, that's a very easy one. They wanna add depth, they wanna add scoring. They're sitting in second place right now and have a pretty decent gap between the third place Watford, which gives them the automatic promotion. And on top of that, they have a player that is leaving. Ilman and Dai is potentially going to be transferred this window. It's not a done deal yet, but it looks very likely. So that's one of their strikers that could potentially move on. And then in comes Ike Ugo. You got a player who's playing in the top five league in France. He's obviously got experience in England as well. The 3-4-1-2 system that Sheffield United play, I think it suit Ugo. He's going to have that dual striker going on there. So I, that one kind of makes sense if you're looking towards the top of the table. And the other option I had is kind of a little bit more towards the middle and bottom. I have a couple ones to throw out there. One is Preston North End. They only scored 26 goals. They're sitting 11th place. They're having a decent season, but I think they could use a little extra added scoring. And the other one is Cardiff City, who are sitting in 21st place just above the relegation line. They have scored the least amount of goals in the league with 21. They, they've only conceded 31. Just a lot of draws, little close games. This could be a nice little added bonus if they have the money to bring him in. Again, I gave you one at the bottom, one in the middle, one at the top. I kind of hope he goes to Sheffield United because if Ndai does move on, it gives an opening for Ugo to come in, compete, you know, at the top of the table, maybe form that little relationship with Jebison, get him to come in. That's just a potential, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. But two very interesting storylines right now. I'm really excited for Laren to move to La Liga, but again, I'm, I'm not as excited as I would be if I felt like it was the perfect fit. Cause I'm not convinced this is the perfect fit. This is a team in dreadful form. They have plenty of attacking options in both those positions. I think Laren will really have to test himself. He wants to break into the starting 11 and impact this team in any way in a very competitive league. And as for Ugo, you know, get out, go back to the championship. I'm, I'm really excited to see where he lands. Hopefully it does happen soon. Get these players the ability to hopefully impact and get into the starting 11. Cause that's the number one reason why it's not been working out at Club Rouge and Toise. They just simply don't have the minutes. So let me know what you guys think. If you like the move for Kyle Aaron going to La Liga, if you want to see Ubo head back to England with the championship, what clubs do you think could potentially go after him? Those are my three. And hopefully you guys did enjoy this episode. And if you did, as always, be sure to drop a like, drop a sub. And we'll see you soon. Cheers, friends.